What's the biggest thing for you to improve on, um, stepping up and being a starter? Um, I, I think I think everything. Uh, playing the run, being being solid as the run, because you know I'm not as big of a guy, so being solid as the run and just just everything, improving at a fast, at a fast rate. You know, I'm, I, I think I got a lot to prove. So. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the After Effect Podcast. I am your host, LeBron Steph. You can call me Bron, Bron, B Ron, Big Bron, L BZ, L Boogie, B Ron, whatever you prefer. Welcome to episode 26. We have a very, 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 very special guest today on the show today. Five year NFL linebacker. From Jersey, we played together for two years. Uh, he transferred to Tulane, had a great career there, went undrafted in 2012, played with the Packers for one year and four years with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now is a real estate investor and a TV news host and an entrepreneur. So super uber excited to have him on. Just send him the invite, just wait for him to jump on, and we will go in. There you go. Okay, yeah. There you go. Go. What's good with you, yeah, bro? bro? What's good, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm like, what's yeah. good with this thing, man? Right. That, I forgot hard. the Zoom. This Zoom is very touchy, bro. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that. Hey, happy Saturday, bro. I appreciate you man, carving out some time. Same to you. Same to you, man. I was at the crib. I was, uh, I had pulled up to one of our little flip properties we were working on. I was going kind of walk you through it while we was talking, but the service is bad over there. Okay, so okay. it didn't work out, but okay, we'll chop it up. You. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. We chop it down. Um, so yeah, like I said, man, it's called the After Effect Podcast. I feel like all us athletes, we got twenty plus years of experience. We all have an after yeah. effect. We all have an aftershock of all those years of experience: the wins, the losses, the injuries, the 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 victories, the defeats, all that. So this is just a platform for us to relive our childhood, tell our stories, and and just have a voice, yeah. man. Absolutely, man. That's dope, man. I appreciate you having me on. This Definitely. is a really dope platform. Definitely, definitely, man. You know, we go we go back to 2007, but we'll we'll get to that. Uh <laughs> so yeah, bro. Yeah, you see me. You see I me. See, I hey, just wonder. Hey, big, you see big, me. hey, big ten football is back, man. It's a great Saturday. But um, I I, I I always felt like we was more than athletes, bro. So before we let's talk some current events. Who do you have winning the Super Bowl this year and why? Now, before you answer that, I know you may be a little biased because <laughs> You played with the Chiefs for four years. You live in the right. Kansas City area. <laughs> so, <Man. laughs> who you got? Look, win, who you got winning the Super Bowl and why? Look, you know me. I like to, you know, I've, I've just taken a job as a sports analyst, so I, I try to be a little more in the middle and, and objective. But to be honest, the Kansas City Chiefs—they have a great chance, man. That's probably my, my front runners right now. Mm -hmm. um, they got a running game. They just added Le'Veon Bell. Man, he's a real ball player. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He, he's going to add to their run game as well as their pass game. He's a hell of a run blocker yeah. uh, or a pass blocker as well. You know, he adds a ton of dimensions to them. So I think he could be the missing piece mm -hmm. if he has his mind right in there. You know, he's going to have right. to be a selfless player mm -hmm. and a great teammate. But Kansas City has all the weapons, man, to, to repeat. They're my front runner, man, just to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and to be honest, I also like I like Baltimore, but I've seen a lot of a lot of people pick a Baltimore. One thing I've noticed about them, they lost two tight ends, man. They had two great tight ends last year. They did, year they did that, yeah. that they lost. They, they had three of them. He had boom, boom. Yeah. he likes big targets. He throws the ball hard. These guys were athletic. They catch the ball and run. Now he's down to one. You know, yeah. it's a lot, it's a big load. We'll right. see how they how they hold up. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I agree with those sentiments, man. I think. With Lamar losing those tight ends, he's going to have to do more, which he can. He's still a young guy, yeah. so he can, oh, he's, yeah. he, he's going to have to do more. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm from Cleveland, born and raised, so I've always been a Browns fan. We 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 <laughs> doing pretty good this year, four and two. I've always felt myself gravitating towards Kansas City just because of right. who's on the team and just those relationships. Like uh, Travis Kelsey is a Cleveland guy. We played against yeah. each other in high school and basketball. And then you got the former Hawkeyes, Ben Neiman and Anthony Hitchens. Then you got you got Frank Clark, oh, who, went yeah. to, who went to my high school and played in the Big Ten as well. I so know I, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but he played at Michigan. So I've always 
been kind of toward the Chiefs just because of those, those ties, man. But, yeah, I definitely think, I mean, I would love to see the Browns and the Chiefs in the AFC Championship. Not saying that, that that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the Browns, look, I think me and you both know the Browns got a little bit ways to go. But yeah. to be honest, you know, I don't want to flip the script, but what you think about your quarterback situation, man? What you think about that guy? Do you think he can get you to the promised land? Well, I, man, <laughs> man, I know that he can't read defenses. I mean, I think he got some talent, but he's sure. been he's been struggling his first six games, he's really struggled to read defenses. Like he's he's telling he's telling uh telemarketing all his passes, you know where he's going. Right. Um he, he's just really had a hard pro uh, a hard time uh reading defenses. <laughs> and then it's like oh like my father and just a couple of my OGs just want them to try to back up so bad. Put put Keenum in, <laughs> put Keenum in <laughs> well, because you know K- Case Keenum has has played and he's kind of proven himself. But you know what, and you know me. You- you know, we go way back. I went down to Tulane and played in the, the what was at the time Conference USA. Yeah, Case Keenum was in our conference. He was down going, in Houston at the time, going crazy. And he's still, I remember, he's still to this day <laughs> the all-time leading passer in college football. I remember, so, I remember. <laughs> hey, look, like Birdman said, hey, when you say Case Keenum, put some respect on his name, man. Man, for real, <laughs> for real. So I really think, I mean, you know, you know, I mean, you played in the league for five years, so you know the politics. Baker was a first was a was a first round first pick of the draft. So I think he's gonna have to really play, continue to play horribly for them to bench him. But we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? He got the leash is always a, a, a bit longer, and I'm sure he'll keep a job. And he's not, you know, he's not trash. He's he's not one of those guys. But we're talking top tier elite quarterbacks. If you want to go up against the Patrick Mahomes, exactly. Aaron Rodgers, who man, I feel bad for that guy. He has no weapons in right. Green Bay, but and still doing know, it. The Tom Brady. And still doing it. Still doing it. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's just – if he wants to get into that realm and compete against those type of guys, mm-hmm, he's going to have mm-hmm. to be more consistent, like you said, especially making those reads, exactly. taking care of the ball, and making some of those winning plays. Exactly. I, mean, I, I couldn't agree more. So tell me this, bro. How have you grown mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually in the last eight months, right? Since since we've been on this earth, we I think we, yeah. we're both 31. 2020 has been the weirdest year ever. Pandemic, you, you uh, uh, Kobe gone. There's all these different yeah. weird things happening this year. We've had to pivot in so many different ways and really find ourselves. How have you grown these in these last eight months? Yeah, to be honest, man, it's it's a constant process, man. And we, you know, the type of people we are as athletes, as men, where we come from, it's, mm-hmm. it's about growth. It's yeah. about consistently growing. You know, getting that knowledge, man, is key. It's, it's the power, you know, mm-hmm. elevating yourself. Mm-hmm. Adding those notches to your your belt, you know the, the small s- steps to success. Mm-hmm. But I would say, man, it's been tough, bro. And, yeah. and I'm sure you probably felt some of the same emotions with the police brutality, man. It's been moments and days, man, where I just took time to myself, man, and just cried, man. You know, and really, yeah, yeah. just you know, taking that time to feel these emotions. And yeah. a lot of times, as men and black men, we we, we were trained to. Be cold blood, you know. Be just, so hard, chest out, like no emotion. Just take it all in, you know. Yeah. But it's it's something in the release. It's something in really going through those emotions. I agree, bro. And it don't have to be destructive because a lot of times, and I say by myself because a lot of times, even for us, you know, just because of the way we look, a lot of our emotions can can still come off like just exactly. anger to other people exactly. that don't know us. That's not where we're from. That exactly. You know, so it's good to do it by yourself sometimes. You know. Yeah, definitely, man. And I just agree cry with. There and and be human, man. But you know, I cried, man, when Nip died. I cried yeah. when Kobe died, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit hit me different, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are some of my idols, and I'm I'm talking about guys from the dirt, man, who really yeah, you know, work their way into. The position that they're in, man, that set up the people around them, mm-hmm. and then gave game back to us, man. When they exactly, ain't to. exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I, I, I could, uh, man, I couldn't agree more, bro. Like you said, um, <laughs> I, 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 I shared a tear probably, probably twice this year. Just yeah. like you say, the police brutality, and like when you really unpack it, bro, like. I feel like I, I I became so numb to it. I, I'm you like, like especially going to Iowa City, I got used to walking into a gas station or a mall and people looking at me weird or funny or looking at me like I'm a threat just because I'm a black guy. Like I I've become so numb to it. So like for the last 
10 to 15 years, I don't even notice it anymore because I, I become numb to it. It's like a part of my life, right? And as, right. Black, as black men, we shouldn't have to go through that. And that's why it gets so emotional because we, yeah. we have to come, we have to become numb to it to continue to live our lives. Because if we don't, right. we may, we may snap, you know, we may pop off on somebody yeah. or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, and we know the consequences are always going to be more severe. Oh, you know, we you know don't that. get a chance to have those, those breakdowns, man. You can build up a reputation for like, we, you know, 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. one day, you know, one day they, they can take it all you. away from you. I'm so. I'm telling that, you, bro. You, you know the vibe. Reality. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, that's you the know reality. The, you know the vibe, bro. So yeah, it's one day at a time. To be honest, man. So that's let it. me ask you one last current event before I go to your childhood. Deion yeah. Sanders to HBCU. Like, what? What do you yeah. think? Of, what do you think about him? Kind of having that uh, uh, courage to, you know, step out and go coach at HBCUs to really try to put the HBCUs in a better space. Yeah. I mean, Dion's always been ahead of the curve, man. Mm -hmm. I love the move, you know, because it's going to bring more top-tier athletes to the HBCU, which a lot of people don't know back in the history. The HBCUs used to run through the NCAAs. Yeah, yeah, until I they heard changed about that. The funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until the NCAA started getting state funding. You know, they started getting these buildings donated to them. Mm -hmm. You know, these arenas donated to them to where the resources begin to, really yeah. separate as far as leveling mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. why i think this is super powerful with what he's doing because what he's going to do is tilt it tilt the needle back a little exactly. bit he's exactly gonna shift the scale exactly. these kids will be one be with Dion. Dion exactly. got enough stain on his name and say yo i got one down here here a real one take him just because i said so come on now <laughs> <laughs> bro I, bro i interviewed two Man. i interviewed two dbs last week who played at Boston College in Northwestern? I said, if Deion Sanders walk into your living room and say, "I want you, I want you in my secondary," they say, "I'm signing." I, uh, hands down, you ain't got to say nothing else. I don't care where you at. You could be at Jackson State, Appalachian State. I don't care where you at. <laughs> I'm coming to where you at. <laughs> He's gone. Exactly. And that's the Deion effect, you know. Exactly. I, I think it's a great move, bro. I think it's a great move because kids are going to feel that way. It's I'm still prime time, baby. <laughs> and, and and what people forget, and that this is why I think Dion is really a genius. People forget Dion worked for the NFL and ESPN yeah. for 15 years, so he know those pr producers, he know those contractors yeah. to get those to get those deals, to get those Jackson State games and those ESPN networks. Even if it's ESPN too, he know those guys. He know what to do. <laughs> well, not only that, man, he's he's had a long time relationship and and a sponsorship with Under Armour. You know, yep. one of the fastest growing brands. Yep. I used to be a, a an affiliate. Mm -hmm. Under Armour used to cut me some checks. Yeah, they're putting a lot of energy into it, man. It's it's new, it's growing. They're catching up to the Nikes, man. Oh yeah. And I think that with that combo, Dion itself is a brand along with Under Armour. Mm -hmm. He could change. The, he could change the face of this whole HBCU, and, and I think he's going to start on with his team in his conference. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. It's 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 <laughs> it's you. literally it's about to be a big tide wave on the HBCU room, and I and I'm happy, man. I'm happy for it. <laughs> Definitely, 100%. Man. Well, we see it on the basketball front, too, man. They're starting to get some of them top-tier yep. basketball players. Yep. Howard, take one, two guys. I'm telling you, it's, yeah. it's, it's about to North change. North Carolina State. <laughs> yeah, it's about to yeah. change. I'm happy for it, man. Yeah, baller. So let's talk, talk Let's talk Jersey culture, man. You From a willing bro to be exact, yeah. um, how was it growing up in the 90s uh, in Jersey? Because, you know, it's 2020 now, and everything is so different now. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have internet. We didn't have yeah. cameras. We didn't have, you know, we we was really outside. We really had to interact and play with each other and stuff yeah. like that. It was, it was, it's way, it was, it was way different in the nineties. So how was the Jersey culture? Did you have any influences man, or mentors? 100% man. We was, you know, at this time, man, we was big into Jay-Z. He was one of our guys who, who just showed us the game. It was, we wasn't in a drug, a drug using culture back yeah. then. We was in, we was hustlers. Yeah. You know, that's all we was about back then. So, Growing up in that time, like you said, we was outside, man. We played ball. Yeah. You know, we hooped. That was the everybody hooped, man. You know we that. used to spend days and still. I took my girl to the crib this last uh about this last month. I, we still out at the court, man. My little cousins, we balling. They try to yep. get me out there. I got the sore knee. I would have still been out there on the head. <laughs> you know, but that's our culture. Yeah. The, the girls out there, they're gonna be out there with their little thing, their little one twos on. Right. And the fellas gonna be out there balling. Right, you out there it. all day with the music. You do your thing, man. You know, if you got a little uh, issue, you might you might handle it out. Yeah, there, yeah, you yeah. Know? You might you might shoot the fair. You might shoot the fair one. <laughs> a little pain and get back to what you was doing. You exactly. Know what I'm saying? Exactly. 
I loved it, man. Honestly, I loved it. I miss that culture, man. I miss when you could, you know, really just hash it out with a man, throw some knuckles, man, and y'all get and, back and to that, your yeah, family. Exactly, man. and that's it. You know, it's it's and, different and, now. It's too much all the all the gun play and all that. It's different now. Everybody on drills doing drills now. You know, it's like I miss those days, bro, when you can just have a respect for a man. Because mm-hmm. a lot of my friends, bro, a lot of my best friends even, we done have some fisticuffs, bro, and just kind of have mutual respect, man, after that. Exactly. Just because we did it like that. And I think exactly. it's a, a level to that. I think it's a beauty to it, man. And for any of the young cats listening where we from, get back to it, man. Ain't nothing wrong with a little, we young warriors. That's exactly. what we, you know, we built like that. Mm-hmm. But we, we got to stop doing this, killing each other, man, because we're killing our network, man. We're killing our cousins, man. We're killing I'm telling our, you. You know, we got to find a different way, man. We got to smarten up because we are the culture. You exactly. look at music today. You we look are. at music. Every single <laughs> culture mimics mimics whatever we do. Exactly. Our <laughs> culture is the culture. <laughs> you look at the card that you're like, they, they've been mimicking our Jones, but it's we are the flavor. We are the talent. Exactly. We got to stop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got to learn to do business together, man, to network together because when we do that, we're going to open up a whole new realm. We were exactly. 400 years behind, bro. 400 you know I'm in years. This real estate. 400 we were 400 years. years behind. I'm telling you. I got you. passion about real estate because my great grandfather's, even the smartest, savviest black man that he was, mm-hmm. he didn't have the opportunity to do what I what I do right now legally to borrow money, to yeah. flip homes in certain neighborhoods, yeah. to sell homes, to, yeah. to build homes. You know, it's, he didn't have the opportunity to do that, man. So yeah. it's our duty now yeah. to get on our job and, and, and really build for our, I'm our family you. to come, our I'm generations to come. So it's they so can important. They don't have yeah. to worry. <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 it's so important, man. And, I, and I'm I'm saving right now trying to trying to tap in. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Definitely. And it's a process, definitely. bro. Exactly. But you know what, man? I think it starts with the knowledge, man. And when I left the game, I never I never owned a home while I played in the NFL. I was under the possession that I, I couldn't afford it. Mm-hmm. That's that's just pure ignorance. Right. You know, that's just pure ignorance in the sense I didn't have that knowledge. I'm thinking I'm buying a depreciating asset like I'm buying a vehicle or something. Yeah. Nobody told me that property never depreciates or rarely yeah. appreciates. Ever. <laughs> my uh, my oh, phone yeah. died, bro. My bad. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, no. Back, oh, oh yeah, no, you good. Okay. Yeah, we we definitely gonna uh, um talk talk about real estate uh in, in a little bit. Yeah. Um so tell me about like your transition in the high school, like when you really started to come yeah. into your own, when when those offers started to come in, you started to hear from, you started hearing from colleges and stuff like that. Yeah. To be honest, man, my experience was a little bit different. I was a three-sport athlete in high school. I was a, a baseball, football, and basketball player. Mm-hmm. So I played sports year-round, bro. But baseball was my number one sport. Wow. Believe it or not, man, I was a, a baseball was my best sport. So um, it, it, I, I loved all three, but I wasn't I wasn't going to those camps in the summer, bro. I wasn't going to the – you know, I wasn't going to get ranked. I wasn't. Yeah, I was yeah. playing baseball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So during <laughs> that's season, crazy. I didn't know. I didn't know you played baseball too. I knew you hoop. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I hoop, yeah, I hooped and I played. But, but football was one of those things, man, that I kind of just always played naturally. Man, I, did, I didn't train in the off season for it and until I got about high school. Yeah, I never forget, man, going into my my ninth grade year. I went up to the high school, man. I went to check out, you know, see what the varsity looked like. My pops, you know, he like, you want to go see what these boys look like? If you talking about you want to play varsity? Yeah. <laughs> You gotta go see the work. I'm like, right, oh. right. You know, I'm 165 at the time, about 6'1, 165. I get up there, I see these kids, they 220, 225. I'm like, okay, you know and, what I'm saying? In high like, school. Okay. <laughs> in high school, bro, this is the varsity, though, you know? So I, I'm eighth grader going into ninth, and I said, my pops, I said, I gotta get stronger. That's the only thing I see. I said, I'm more athletic than these cats. I got better ball skills. Yeah. These these cats are all stronger than me right now. Yeah. I hit the, I hit the weight room twice today, bro. Yeah. Every day, the, the strength coach, our actual high school strength coach, kicked me out. Bro, they know I already had a back win. My big cousins used to go to the same high school, so they already told me, look, you want to get in, this is how you do it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in there twice a day, bro. Put that work in. And by the time we got to the first, put that work in, bro. By the time we got to the first game, I was one, I was about 179. I was okay. starting start safety. Wow. True freshman. Wow. I, I started off every game that year. We weren't great. Going into the basketball season, same deal. Basketball coach holler at me. I played a couple games on JV, but at this point, I'm starting to take care of my body. Mm-hmm. I'm starting same. to realize, oh, my separation is I'm stronger. Now I'm getting stronger than these little – even the seniors on the basketball team now, they they my size. Uh-huh. I'm too fresh. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm a freshman, but I'm coming off a of varsity football season. Uh-huh. Now I'm going against, you know. Same, so it was the same way for start, me. <laughs> I ended up starting varsity. Basketball season. Yeah. And, 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 and ninth grade? And ninth grade. Damn. <laughs> ninth grade. I started JV in ninth grade, but I didn't start varsity <laughs> basketball until 10th grade. But I started varsity football in ninth grade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this bro, this is varsity, bro. And this group four, this is the biggest group in, in New Jersey. I'm talking yeah. about we had we had deep kids Top going to one. We yeah. they had to sit down some real ball players. Oh yeah. yeah. So baseball season roll around, bro. Same story. They start to realize like, oh, this kid is, you know, and it's crazy because I'm sure you dealt with it even in high school, bro. You start to see the politics and even the little trickle of hate. I'm in the neighborhood, bro, and, and folks, grown men mad. Oh, this is big dude. You know, he did he. That'd be crazy with grown men. That'd be crazy when grown men be mad. Because <laughs> his dad, his dad really the one got him on the team. And did that. I'm like, yeah, you think my pop like that? Like, <laughs> you really think my pop like that? Like, yeah. that's what's up, though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Crazy. But long story short, man, all of that just continued to motivate me, man. I had the same kind of season. Uh, I started off three sports, man, going into my sophomore year. Mm-hmm. It's funny, though, because my after my freshman year, my basketball coach died. Basketball was my number one sport at the time. Okay. My basketball coach, bro, he passed away in the most odd way, bro. Over the summer, bro, they found his body in the in, in the river, bro. Oh, in the wow. Where we from? Wow. So this broke my heart, bro. You know, this a yeah. man that had enough faith in me to, to start me over a senior. I'm thinking I'm finna. I did, That's crazy. At this point, bro, I'm already got offers from. Uh, I got off coach who was a former NBA dude. Man, he started hollering. This dude cussed us out mid game. I transfer after my. After my sophomore year, okay. <laughs> <laughs> go back to the neighborhood where I'm from. Cause at this point I'm living with my pops. So I go back to where I'm from, which is Willenboro. Yeah. I did my junior senior year there back in Willenboro. Mm-hmm. I'm back with the homies now. Yeah. Our football, we like top, we like a top five team in the state now. I was the homies. They just added me. They was already there. Yeah. We started going crazy, man. Basketball, we top tier. I never forget it. I will offer me my junior year when they came to see me play basketball, bro. Oh, okay. They never, they okay. never offered me until they saw me play. It, uh, uh, Coach Wilson came out there. I think Ferris was there too. Okay. I'm hooping. I go up on the two hand joint on a fast break. They like, oh, yeah. I see. You. We can start doing <laughs> all the moving like this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, 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 we saw what we, we, saw what we wanted to see. <laughs> Whatever position we need, there you go. You know, yeah. And you know me, I play tight end, line, they try to move me to D tackle, bro. Right. I played a little bit of everything, but you know, I say all I like to say this, man. We went out there, we bought, man. We just had fun, bro. This was public school. Right, right. I ain't right, gonna right. have to go to no private school. school. I ain't, right. It was, you know, this is a public school, man. We just went out there, we bought with our partners, and we had two, three guys go D one, man. And right, um, right, right. Honestly, it was life changing, man. Yeah, yeah. Life changing for us, man. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that, definitely, man. That is Jer- Jersey sound very similar uh to Cleveland, man. So oh, yeah. t- talk about your transition to Iowa, like like from my from my so from my viewpoint, I feel like you made it look easy. You didn't register, you came right in, right. and you and should you you got right into the two deeps and, and everybody knew you was <laughs> everybody could tell that you were super developed. I came in, I, I was a little undersized. I think I only weighed like 219. So I was I was real fast, real explosive, but I I, yeah. I, I didn't weigh nothing. I was 219. So I knew I, right. I had I knew I had to put on some weight, but um I feel like you came right in and jumped right into the two deep, all the special teams, getting getting reps and um I forgot who I was talking to. Uh, I think it was Mike Daniels. We was talking about that 2007 uh-huh. class. Our 2007 class was kind of crazy going to Iowa. You, me, <laughs> Burns, Jordan we, we Bernstein. <laughs> oh, Jordan Bernstein, Mike Daniels, Adam Geddes. People forget Brian Belaga was the first offensive lineman. Brian Belaga. Brian Belaga was the first offensive lineman to, to do three and out at Iowa. He he was in our yeah, class. Like, yeah. like we had some ballers, bro. <laughs> still in the league. He like, says. Sad, Sash, God bless the dead, Sash, bro. Yeah. Like, our that class was crazy. So just talk about your transition because obviously we lived at, we lived in the same dorms and we was real tight. But you just made yeah. it look you made it look so easy, man. So talk about that tra- that transition <laughs> and 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 having success early. You know what, man? We probably made it look too easy. I don't, I don't know if they liked how easy we made it look. I'm telling you, because you know what, man? You know as well as anybody. We li- you live right next door. You and Tay, man. Yeah, right. Tay Morrow. Yep. Y'all was our next door neighbors, me and Jay Bernstein, you know, yep. you know how we was living. All right. And still, we, you know, it was kind of our culture growing up, but we used to still, you know, kind of, it's Jersey. 
You know, mm-hmm. and if you know anything about Jersey, you know, they got a, a great nice life. We was out, you know, at the club, bro, 16, 17. Yeah. Still get up on Saturday and go go get somebody 250, 300 yards, you know. Right, right, right. But my transition into college in Iowa City, man, I thought I was going to have the same type of um, low keyness, man. I think I was, I had a rude awakening because although we was performing on the field, I think one of my biggest hurdles for myself was off the field, man. We, mm-hmm. you know, we had a great time, but our transition on the field for me, bro, it was all mental. You know, yeah. physically I came in, I was, I was, I was ready to be, I, you know, I prepared. I was 235 when I came Yeah, in. yeah, you came in 235. You, you, <laughs> you are, you are, you look like a big 10 <laughs> linebacker. I'm like, man. <laughs> <laughs> they, they came to my high school, they was like, yo, don't, don't bring, they was like, don't gain no more weight. Right. Like, that's what they came back and was saying, like, cause they came in the summer one time, like, I think it was my senior year. I had already committed like my junior. So they came back just to check in on me, bro. I had muscles all over the place. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They're like, yo, <laughs> don't gain no more weight, bro. You better just start running. <laughs> like, so, you know, I, I kind of took the a little bit, but I still didn't come in in condition wise yeah. as far as that Big Ten. I think that's where I kind of had a rude awakening, man. Was that that type of conditioning, man? I'm telling we you. We talk about pros now. We talking about first round guys that we playing next to, that we playing against. Exactly. We talking about, you know, the Charles Godfrey, yeah. you know, the Brian yeah. Belagas. We talking yeah. about, you know, the Sean <laughs> Greens and the guy. We talking about top tier yeah, guys. Big, yeah, big dogs. <laughs> Adrian Claiborne's next to you. You miss your block. Adrian Claiborne getting double teamed. Like, I'm telling you. better you, be yeah. on top of your job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mike Humples and, you know, all the way back to the safety spot. We had real guys, man. Yeah, definitely. You know, you had to earn that respect. I mean, that's one thing about Iowa. You, when you get there, you're going to put that work in. Oh, you, oh, you know that. Everybody, you're going <laughs> to put it in. So if you're a dog and you accept that, you was going to be okay. Exactly. You know, we had exactly. some guys and some characters. I Honestly, bro, I wish they would have had a better setup for us to where they understood the type of guys and the type of young men. Where they understood our probably. culture. Yeah. 100% because we weren't bad kids. None of us. None of we us. We were all good kids, man. I'm we telling had a you. lot of love for each other. <laughs> exactly. And, and we would have done anything for each other. You know? I'm telling and you, bro. I think there would have been a lot of power in keeping us together. I actually believe, without a shadow of a doubt, we would have had a national championship man, in our easily. future, man. We could have kept that core together. Bro, when easily. we went out there and did our true freshman year at, at Syracuse, bro. Bro, easily, I don't even bro. know if he was out there yet, but we, it was unbelievable. But we had pure talent, and it was a, a, a beautiful thing to be a part of. Mm-hmm. It was a brotherhood that's still to this day, bro. You say it right. Since to this day, still, we still tight. <laughs> still, you know, call up like we never left, man. It's, it's, I'm it's telling love, you. man. And that's, yeah, yeah. That's a brotherhood for real. Exactly. Pure, pure brotherhood. So talk about what went into um, your decision to leave Iowa. I know, I think, I, I can't remember what happened. I think maybe you yeah. and Bernie maybe got like caught out after curfew or something. And then the next practice, they moved you to like D tackle or D end or some shit. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah. He, yeah, like, oh yeah, they trying to, they trying to, they trying to wrap him with the okie doke. And then you like, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'm hip, I'm hip to it. You know, I was on top of the business part, and my pop, he had a lot of experience. You know, he had worked with a sports agency, so okay. he, you know, we stayed in tune, man. I don't know if you remember, but I had got a public intox after week four. Remember, we played, we were. No, this was actually my sophomore year. So our true sophomore yeah, year. Yeah, 2008. Or my true sophomore Correct. Yeah. And then we went out to pit. My whole family was there. LaShawn McCoy oh, yeah, was yeah. running. Yeah, yeah. That's what we played with LaShawn McCoy. Off. I remember that. Yeah. Young LaShawn. He was going crazy out there. Long story short, we was like number 10 in the country. We ended yeah. up going out there and losing. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. number 25 pit. Yep. When I came back, you know, I'm heartbroken. My whole family there. We lost, man. I might have even cried, but that's how much that game meant to me, man, at the crib yeah. for me. Yeah. You know, we went back and, you know, obviously I drank, I drank too much, man. I go out to the club, you know, yeah. and, and end up going out one night, man. And this is really, and I, I'm telling this story because I'm telling you how important your brothers are to you. you right. Me? I go out, you know, my right hand was, was, was Joe and Bernstein. Nine times out of 10, you see him, you're going to see. You're oh, you see know him. that. You know that. This one particular night, bro, that, JB went home early, you know, I'm, I'm talking to some females. Another one of the guys, you know, he's not one of my aces, but he just kind of telling me, like, yo, they're chill the police, police boy. I'm like, yo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fuck the police. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't doing nothing. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, talking yeah. to my man, though. Exactly. About two minutes later, he's like, yo, that's chill, chill. I'm just, you know, I'm kind of getting animated, <laughs> but still, I'm minding my business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yo, that's chill, chill, the police. <laughs> I'm like, bro. Well, you know what I'm saying? The police from all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you was probably loud I'm as hell. <laughs> I'm loud because I'm, I'm drunk too, but I'm, you know, in my mind, I'm minding my business. 
Exactly, you exactly. <laughs> Bro, tap me. What you say? <laughs> this is the officer now. Oh, man. Officer, officer tapped me and asked me what I say. I'm like, bro, I said, bump, don't know, don't Bump all of y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, you know said, what I, mean? I bro, said what I said. <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> don't slap me up in a deal. You know, they take me down public in talk. Oh, know, okay. I see, I see. I didn't, I didn't remember that. I didn't remember you. Oh, okay. So that's what happened. Okay. Okay. Public in talk. So that was week four. Parents brings me in, man, is this how you really feel about the police? And this is, like I said, where I wish they would have really understood us, where we from, our culture. Yeah. Even now, to this day, I think it's a lot clearer what I said. Yeah. This was my words verbatim what I said to Coach Rand. I said, where I'm from, we don't we don't believe in the police. We don't trust the police. We yeah. don't fuck with the police. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he was, a, like, he was low-key offended by it. But yeah, I he couldn't believe you said that. Well, yeah, and I was yeah. probably too ignorant to really play the game as but I was just being genuine, exactly. you know, and this is a man I have respect for. So I was telling him straight, straight forward, coach, this yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Definitely. And you know, he's, he ended up suspending me four games for that. I, I never forget. I came back from suspension and I could eat with the team, bro. I couldn't lift with y'all. I couldn't go to study hall with y'all. Yeah, I remember that. For four weeks. And as, season. Soon, and as soon as that you came back, they moved you to D tackle. <laughs> D tackle, bro. But it was crazy because Bullshit. he said when I came back, he said when I came back, the next person that gets one, you're off the team. You remember who the next, who his, had the next two? His son. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave me one week suspension. And nobody, and nobody ever even heard about it. Nobody even knew his son got public intox twice. Nobody knew that except, except the teammates. Twice. I'm telling you, bro. White privilege. But look. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then, like you said, I'm too deep as a true freshman. Yeah. This is true sophomore year. They they took me from in the rotation, one, too deep, to move me to deep tackle. They told me the to game 50 Politi- said, Politics. Oh. Politics. Yeah, I said, pop, pop. You, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you did the right thing. You got up out of there. I remember you You kept telling me. You kept telling me, hey, bro, hey, you better come with me. <laughs> you kept telling me that, hey, bro, you better come with me, bro. I was trying to put a package together, man. <laughs> like, hey. man, my boy, look, we can get two bookends. Hey, we'll come with you. Look, you yeah, get I remember right you. Now. What's up? Exactly. I remember you kept telling me <laughs> that, bro. But um, so yeah, talk about you know that transition. You transferred into Tulane yeah. and if, and essentially, essentially ascending, <laughs> ascending. Like, I mean, you had a great career at Tulane. Um, yeah. I, I think you had to maybe sit out one year uh, since you transferred. Yeah. But talk about that transition and then ultimately becoming the player that you saw your, yourself being and having success at Tulane? You know what, man? It took extreme focus because it was a heartbreaking situation. Yeah. I ended up leaving the team, uh, I would, in the middle of that year. And um, I don't know if you remember, but, uh, you know, Coach Ferentz had come to a team meeting and JB told me this the day I came back to the room. He's like, man, Coach Ferentz said he's going to make sure Desmond Moses don't go D1. I'm like, bro, he didn't say all that, but he's like, no, for real. He's like, he, he said he's going to make sure I'm like, what? So I'm like, man, we're going to see. My, yeah. my athletic director at my high school was one of the most respected guys in the country. I mean, this guy still puts on yeah. clinics and, and camps for young players, showcases. So I call him. You know, I call him. I hadn't been in touch already. Man, I'm in touch with every school, bro. I got Notre Dame on the line. Yeah. I got Pitt. You know, I got anywhere, you know, USC literally in the country. Yeah. They like, yo, we just got to talk to Iowa, and then we'll get you out here. Oh, uh, see? Up. It's, see, it's they got to talk to Iowa. That was the last time. That was the last line I heard from about ten schools. Wow, because you know, sir, but I ended up because you know he <laughs> bad about you. <laughs> well, this the thing, bro. They wouldn't even respond. Not only did they not call me back, but they wouldn't even answer my text. Like they wouldn't even respond to my text, my emails after they no response. But Tulane Way was struggling, and they were like a two and twelve, two and ten team, man. I remember that they needed some players, man. They needed some players, and we were. I mean, it wasn't good, but. I needed the opportunity. I understood I had to humble myself, and it was a humbling experience, man. Mm. I had to go out there. I didn't play for 18 months, bro. I don't know if you remember. I didn't play the rest of that year, and I yeah, had to register. Yeah, sit out the hell. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I, play for 18 months. How, how did you deal with and that emotionally, I, man? I, I know that was hard to deal with. Man, I had some great people in my life at the time, man, and, and people who really just supported me as a student because you got to understand how difficult, and you know. Mm-hmm. To do 18 months as a student athlete, but never get to go out there and even play the game you love. Man. That's the whole reason we there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to really lock in as a student athlete to study. And we're talking about Tulane now. I had to do all my work, bro. 
Yeah, I yeah. Do all my papers. Yeah. Ain't no tutor that's going to, you know, help, you know. It was, <laughs> I had to get it done, you know. Right, right. And it was, it was honestly, for me, it made me, it took me to another place. It took me back to Willembro, New Jersey, where mm-hmm. I had to lock in. I had to go to that place two yeah. times a day I'm working out. Yeah, just you know, really they, focus, they, they, laser focus. Laser, man. And it was funny because I set the tone for our team even before I ever played the game for Tulane. Mm-hmm. And you could see our culture changing, man. I used to spend, you know, I used to go to practice. Then I go go out there after practice and do my post. They like, what is this after practice stuff you doing? Yeah, I'm like, bro, we, I just came from Iowa, bro. Them boys, we all going to all my partners, we going to the league, bro. We, <laughs> I'm not getting this work. Like, what you mean? Like, right, right, right. Like, my boys still going to the league. Like, I gotta catch my boys at the league. Like, right, I'm getting this work because I'm going to the league, bro. They're right. like, bro, this guy is crazy, yo. <laughs> they like, he's crazy. Right. Ain't not even used to working that hard. <laughs> no, yeah. three months passed, bro. Four months past, I start to, it start to be three, four, five guys back there with me. Mm-hmm. You know, now mm-hmm. it's seven, eight guys staying after practice. You know, guys are starting to believe and they seeing their game starting to elevate. They're like, yo, exactly, this after exactly. work is yeah, their confidence is building. Yeah, fact. but by the time I played 18 months later, bro, plus two games, I got suspended two more games. I came back, my first game was at Rutgers, my red shirt junior year. At Rutgers, so was, at Rutgers, so at Rutgers, so you said so you was back in Jersey. At, Back in Jersey. Now tell me God not God not real. I'm telling you. The last you, that's game crazy. I played was was at Pitt, was in Pittsburgh in front of my whole family. And the first game I played again at Tulane was in New Jersey, North Jersey at East Rutherford. You probably had like 50 family members aunt. there. That's crazy. Well, I had probably 200, bro. <laughs> and my cousin was on the other team. Wow. I had two and a half dope. sacks, bro. Went Three crazy. and a half TFLs, player of the week, yeah. player of the, you know. Crazy. I came back on the radar with a with a drop kick, man, and it was all focused, man. It was all of that work I had put in, yeah, academically, physically, mentally, mm-hmm. changing my habits mm-hmm. had come to fruition, man. And and that was my my started campaign at Tulane. Powerful, and I had bro. I went there and and I guess a year in those two years, bro, I became I was third all time in sacks in Tulane history. Man, that's dope. I still went undrafted. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. Based on some some people's opinion and stuff, I was still might even had the impact in that man. But I still went on as an undrafted free agent. Mm-hmm. As you know, I linked back up with our, our boy Mike D. Yeah, yeah, and we Green Bay. Our rookie year. Yeah, yeah. Talk, know, me, me and Mike D. Was, <laughs> talk about. Me and Mike uh, D. Still went out there. <laughs> of course, of course. Talk about talk about the 2012 NFL draft. Obviously, like you just said, not getting drafted, but but getting on with Green Bay, uh, and you know making the team as an undrafted free agent, and obviously. Like you said, you link it back up with Mike D, but yeah, but really just how blessed you were, bro, to be able to play oh. with a, a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, to be able to be coached by a, a, a player coach like Kevin Green, to really be able to see how Clay Matthews, all these top linebackers move every day, how, you know, their eating habits, how they practice, and how they play in a game, stuff like that. Just talk about that whole experience, bro, because I know it was like oh. to die for. <laughs> uh, you know what, man? It was honestly... I would say it's like a fairy tale. People always ask me. I mean, I, I don't think you can have like a whole year of abyss. Yeah. But for me, it was, man. It truly was in, in so many, in so many counts. And I'm gonna just kind of go down the line. But yeah, first off, I, I was a I was two, I was an undrafted free agent, man. Yeah. I was a preferred free agent. I was undrafted. We we drafted a guy in the same position, first round that same year. Yeah. Nick Perry, <laughs> straight out of USC. Yeah. You know, stud, hell of a player. Yeah. Man, we battled. They gave us genuine battles, man. I beat out a first round guy. I ended up starting that same rookie year. I ended up starting in the playoffs mm-hmm. in San Fran versus Kaepernick. I remember, I remember that. This whole year transpired into that, man. An undrafted guy into a guy that's starting across from Clay Matthews man. In, a, in a championship game. You know, and we had four dogs, man. We had guys, and one of the guys I always shout out was my brother, Eric Walden. I mean, he was a a hell of a talent. Oh, he Eric Wall, yeah, yeah, number 93. I remember him. Yeah, he was nice. E Wall, man. E Wall, man, he was a professional. We were we were competing every day, and he was my best friend, bro. He yeah. this man showed me, hey Mo, this is how you do it. Yeah, I know they're they gonna be tripping. They they hey, they might pull me out. Look, when I tap, just come get me. Look, hey, you better at this on this play, just come get me. Oh, that's that's dope. That's dope. Real same professional, year, bro. We real professional, bro. That same my same rookie year, we had the same stat. And that was his last year. He was on a contract. Yeah, he went off, bro, and signed like a forty million dollar deal with the coach. I remember. I remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he got that bag. And it's because his his 
he still he could have been like, yo, I'm trying to get my rep, I'm trying to get my money. Like, yo, I'm not going to show this young brother nothing. Yeah, yeah. He showed me everything, man. I got to see the game from him. That's amazing. Kevin Green, he was the ultimate coach. Man, this guy never called you out your name. Oh, I'll never that's... forget this day. He came in. Man, we had a poor with their practice. It was one of those, everybody's leg was just, you know, we gave half, half behind effort. Yeah. He comes in, slams the door. It's quiet for like 10 seconds, bro. Just let, just imagine, bang. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, this nigga. Uh, we, he's been a while out on us. Yeah. He, like a tear, a tear. This had veins out. He said, we're better than that. The first words out of his mouth was, we are better than that, bro. Yeah. Like, literally, I dropped a tear because I thought he was going to cuss his dog cuss. He's like, we work harder than that. We train dogs. Yeah. We'll never give a performance like that. I coach you better than that. I, You know, and it was like the fact that he even just said we mm-hmm. as opposed to put casting the blame on us. He yeah. said, I'll never coach you that week again. I'll never let you have. Man, it made us a brotherhood that was so unbreakable, man. Like, yeah. good game, bro. We'd tap out. I come get Clay. He wouldn't look at me sideways. Yeah. He wouldn't. It was a brotherhood, bro. We really trusted what we did. That's amazing. And I always bro. tell this other story because going into uh going into the season, I'm in a weight room, bro. I'm getting a little extra, and I see Charles Wilson down at the end of the other other end of the. He's our starting safety, by the way. Charles yeah. Wilson. <laughs> Charles yeah. Wilson, y'all. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike told me the same story when he first met Charles Wilson. <laughs> Charles Wilson, bro. It's me and Charles and uh, Mr. Wilson in there. Let, let me put some respect on him. <laughs> he calls me down. He's like, Mo. I'm like, I'm like, oh, he. Like, oh, yeah, he, he, he knows. knows he like, Mike said the same like, thing. He know who you is. <laughs> <laughs> he like, hey, Mo. I'm like, I jog over, bro. It's Charles Wilson, bro. I jog down. It's about, you know, 30 yards. He like, man, you a hell of a player, bro. You're going to help us win some games. At this point, bro, I'm an undrafted free agent. And this is before training camp. Yeah, yeah. Charles Wilson just told me, you're going to help us win some games this year. Wow. And it's not made the team, Dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Yeah. But these were the type of guys, man. It was just pure professionalism in the Aaron yeah. Rodgers, man. That you sounds know, like an amazing story, bro. It was, it was beautiful, man. It was beautiful, man. We had the best quarterback in the world. We would be down by seven, bro. He'd come over and say, yo, just go get the ball back. Watch this. <laughs> Winking. <laughs> <laughs> you see, like, yeah, man, the personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he does. And, you, and, you are, and you already know he's going to go down as top two, top three quarterback. Um, man, yeah. so if you can relive this this night, bro, what was it like starting in the NFC championship? Like, 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 we grow, you know, we grow up, we, we Midwest kids, we grew up in the Midwest. Like, yeah. you, we, 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 we watch football our whole life, bro. And yeah. those are the moments that you dream of. First off, making it to the yeah. NFL, but then playing in the playoffs, bro. Like, not the Super Bowl, but the game before the NFC Championship. You yeah. plan, and then you are you you already playing for a big organization like the Packers. But then to get yeah. to play the 49ers, like, like, did you have any like goosebumps, bro? Like, like, how did that feel, bro? Like, <laughs> first off, first off, let me tell you this, brother. They had a they had a bye week the week ahead. Whatever yeah. happened in week seventeen. We were supposed to have a bye. They ended up getting. We kind of dropped the ball. I think we we got fluked in Seattle or something. Something happened. Okay. They had a bye week, so they had two weeks off headed into us. We had these guys down pat. We had oh, we had them studied down. Mm-hmm. They put in a whole new playbook. They had a whole new playbook. Kaepernick was running play. It was running zone reads. Put yeah. So we get into the game, man. First off, I'm not, and I'm not nervous at this point. I had started seven games this year. Yeah. You know, I'm confident, man. My my guy, you know, my team is confident. In, my teammates are confident. My coaches, they like, Mo, this is, just do what we do. We gone. <laughs> you know, right. play hard. If you get tired, tap your brother. We got the whole gang over here. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's up. Right. Let's just rock. You know, it's really no pressure. We, the, we got A-Rod. You know, we got right. Aaron Rodgers. Let's rock. You know. Right. Um, Man, they came out and surprised this man. But the most incredible thing they did, they, these guys had two chain, a stage set up at the end of the end zone. Yeah. Every per, single team. Performing all game, right? I think Mike told me about that. No, during, t- during the TV timeout. So we'd go over to make an adjustment like, yo, it was louder during the TV timeouts, bro, than it was during the game. Two chains That's was crazy. in there. He had just dropped the album. Yeah. This dude, he played every joint off the album. Just imagine, <laughs> just imagine 90,000 fans Having a concert to two chain, man, and then, then, then get to up. watch football. <laughs> <laughs> you know saying? We up. couldn't make any adjustments, man. I mean, they they put together a perfect storm, yeah. but it was just a, a great atmosphere. It, it was literally a dream, and I still watch the game. Man, I'm I, in awe. Oh man, it, 
I, I remember watching those games, like um, the, your your rookie year, you know, when you say you had those seven starts and just watching, just so happy, just so happy for you, bro. Cause, because because <laughs> more than anything, I know what you have been through. I knew, I, I, and I, I know and saw how you got there and I, and I was in those spaces. So I really know that kind of fortitude that you had to have to get there, man. So it, it was, it was, it was, it was a ball saying you play. What's crazy is, and I don't know if you know this, Green Bay actually flew me out and worked, and I had a child with them December of 2012. So um, I think Clay Matthews had got hurt, and so I guess it was like, uh-huh. I think I guess it was only like you, Nick Perry, and uh, Warden. and this was before they moved uh, Mike Neal to outside linebacker. Mike, so they, Mike Neal. Yeah, they yep. was they was I looking they, they was looking for outside linebacker. So they flew me out there, worked me out. Uh, Mike wow. Daniel, Mike Daniels came to the, came to the workout. I'm thinking like, and I know you there. I know Mike there. I know yeah. big, uh, Brian Balaga there. I wish you would have called me. I would have pulled up. I, I'm I like, <laughs> I'm thinking in my head like, man, like that. It's about to happen. I, I, I'm just praying, <laughs> hoping it happen. But unfortunately, they flew me back to Cleveland, and then the, the next game, Aaron Rodgers. That's when he, I think he broke his collarbone. He did something. And he broke his gotcha. collarbone. He was going to be out for like three or four weeks. So they ended up signing Scott Tozin, who was a quarterback gotcha. that went to Wisconsin. And then that's yeah. when and then that's when they moved Mike Neal. He started they, they started giving him snaps at outside linebacker. I was just like, yeah. and I at that point I knew it just it went in the cars for me. But yeah. I remember being so happy Man, and I hope been, they signed me. <laughs> Man, that would have been beautiful, bro. That would have been yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> man. So uh talk yeah. about and then talk about after that first year, you I think um I'm not sure how many years you played with Green Bay, but yeah. I know you played like three or four with Kansas City. And then you go mm-hmm. to Kansas City and you play with another great outside linebacker pass versus Tom Ali, and you play with another yeah. just group of amazing men. So just talk about that transition yeah. and those those experiences. You know what, man? It was it was very, very different, man. And, and honestly, you know, I was a starter going into my second year. I never forget it. Kevin Green called me, bro, the day before the day before we go back for offseason. This is a true story. Hmm. I'm he calls me up, he says, Hey Mo, we're going with you. I'm like, what you talking about? He's like, It's you and Clay. We're going with y'all. We're starting the year off. Like, I'm like, wow. don't play with me, coach. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I still get chills right now. I'm like, don't play with me, coach. Come on, bro. He's like, No, nah, I'm dead serious, man. He was like, Let's go. He's like, keep doing what you've been doing, man. Yeah. That's what he said. Keep doing what you've been doing. So I'm chills, man. I'm like, Coach, man, I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you for believing. He's like, look, don't thank me. You earned it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he told me. Don't thank yeah. me. You earned it. And that's coming and and, and, no and and that's coming from a Hall of Fame linebacker. He a coach, Hall but a Hall of Fame linebacker. Hall of bro. Fame, bro. Kevin Green, the GOAT. Man. Man, I hop off the line. I go. I'm doing my last day of training. You know, we just doing a little conditioning day. Bro, my last rep, bro. Pop. Uh, I thought my trainer threw a lacrosse ball at me, bro. Uh, my calf popped my calf muscle, bro. My last conditioning rep. Uh, I'm man. in tip top shape. Yeah. I go back day one with a, a day one calf sprain. Like I had a grade three calf sprain, but I was on day one of recovery when I went back after I just got called as a starter. Oh, you know, man. so they filling in with now the first round guy from last year, Nick Perry. Obviously, he's you know he's number three. Of course, he walls going. He's our next guy up. So now they, you know, of course, they're doing what they got to do. But I'm just recovering, recovering, man. I'm trying my best to come back. I came yeah. back, and it's hard. Cat, yeah, calf a calf injury. You can't come back. That's not a fast heal. You can't heal from that fast. No. no, and I was just trying. I'm like, man, I gotta hurry up. And I came back a couple times, practice, snatch a guy off, pop my pop it again. Oh, Long man. story short, man, I come into the season. They still they still wanted me as a starter once I got back as camp. Mm-hmm. But I just didn't have the same leg problem. I wasn't able to train the same because I was still more in a rehab mode right, right. with my lower half. Man, I've always been strong in the lower half and um, end up breaking my toe in training camp, man. They couldn't find anything, bro. But I just knew. I heard it. I felt it. I mean, yeah. I, you know your body, man. I, yeah. I broke my toe. Mm-hmm. They end up releasing me. The same day I was a starter, they end up releasing me that offseason after the fourth preseason game, because they just – I'm playing, but I'm I'm hobbling. I told them, I'm, my toe's broken, but they can't see it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, I'm telling them they're going to see it. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I end up in Kansas City, man, and, and the rest is history. But I had to play on a broken toe that year, man. I was going to retire. I told them, I said, either go in there and just move stuff around, or I'm going to retire. I'm going to go play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> For real. And, and so, did, so, you, so you ended up getting – well, what did it end up being? Did you, getting, did you end up getting some kind of surgery? Yeah, I ended up getting toe surgery. I had a broken toe. 
Uh, I had bones floating around in my toe. Oh, you know, man. everybody came back and apologized. They like, I'm like, I tried to I tell, tried you, to tell you. Uh, <laughs> I felt it, but that's you know, crazy. It was Waking up every day and having to walk on it and all and run and run, bro. I was running and you know they dog cussing me. You know how footballers, man. It's they don't know. You know they're yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. ain't Green Bay. We practice it. You know they dog cussing me, man. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know me. I'm tough too. I'm like, look, y'all got me mixed up. Right. Like, right. I'm like that. Like if I'm right. telling you we're hurt, bro. It's, it's, it's really I something going on. Year. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I played the whole year with the broken toe, got it cleaned up. But long story short, man, I was playing behind Tom Mahali and Justin Houston, and we had a different culture there. Yeah. We had a 70-year-old, you know, white dude who was our coach. Okay. He used to call me a knucklehead. I'm like, bro, why are you calling me a knucklehead? Like, what? Right. like you know what I'm saying? Like, just little things where it's like, clearly we, you know. Yeah, the culture was different. It just wasn't a great environment. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a great environment for me. We didn't mess beautifully, man. But I had a... a Four year career there, man. I, I loved my time there. I had a great brotherhood. I got to see Tom Mahali work up close, man. Justin man, Houston. Man. Man, you talk about some. You talk about some sack artists, man. And these guys taught me some stuff to this day that I still teach young young pass rushers. Yeah, I promise you, I, ten workouts I can make them elite, man. I wish I knew this stuff like we did at Iowa. You know, like yeah, back in high what, school. We what what kind of what, what yeah? What kind of thing? What kind of game do they give you as far yeah. as like like hands or get off or? Oh, hands. I mean, you know, even just, man, I wish we could do a segment live. Like, if we could come back and chop this joint up live, man, and walk through some stuff, honestly, I would I would love to do a pass rush segment. But yeah. literally from hand placement, bro, to hip placement, mm-hmm. to to eye placement, um, they. it was funny because when I stopped playing, man, I got cut midseason, you know, yeah. um, 2016. Bro, I was so primed up. I was ready to go anywhere and pass. So I'm like, bro, I've just been learning from – the two best guys in the in league. In the league, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was mid-season, you know, rosters, are, and it's just, you know, it becomes difficult at that point. But That's you know amazing. what? Those guys playing with them, man, I learned some stuff that I'll be able to teach young guys, and I do teach yeah. young guys yeah. for forever, man, because it's Ke- elite. Yeah, it's elite. <laughs> Ke- Kevin Green, Clay Matthews, Eric Warden, Tom Ali, Justin Houston. Man, boy, boy, you bless, You bless, boy. <laughs> I've been around some of the goats, man. I'm for telling real, you, man, for real, for real, man. Even Chuck Smith, man. Chuck Smith was my pass rush coach. Yeah, yeah, Chuck Smith you know, in Atlanta. You know, he. Yep. This guy coaches Von Miller and Adrian Claiborne's. Yeah, you know, the, all the top, the all the top squares. guys. Yep. I I got all the game from these guys. That's <laughs> man. That's man. That's fire. That's dope, bro. So <laughs> talk talk about like man the day. I know you said you got cut in 2016. That was the last time you played. Yeah. But talk about the day you made up in your conscious mind that you were done playing football. Was it a, did you have any mixed emotions? Did you feel like you still wanted to play? Um, was it a good day? Was it a bad day? You know, cause for me, yeah. for, me for me, it was a bad day. I, I mean, it took me a long time to get over being done with the game because I, you know, I, I felt, I think I was too hard on myself and I felt like I underachieved because right. I didn't make the NFL. Um, so right, 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 right. talk about, talk about that day. If, if you can, if you can remember it at all. Yeah. You know what, man? It, it, I don't even think it was a particular day, man. It's more like a process. Yeah. It's difficult, man. It's it's, it's hard, man, to let go of the love, uh, a love for a sport, man, that you put in so much work. You know, this is over a 20-year relationship with this game. Exactly. You know, and, you know, the amount of work, the amount of relationships has, has helped me build, the places it's taken me, mm-hmm. the things it's done for my life, the things it's done for my daughter's life, who, you know, she's only two, she got accounts, you know. Exactly. She's set up already. And, yeah. You know, those things are just, I have to be, it's, I have to be humbled. You have to be have a feeling of gratitude, man. And yeah. and um, you know that day is still still I can't remember one clear cut day. Man, it was a process, you know, and yeah. it was a difficult one to let the game go. But um, you know, I started to really dive into myself, man. I had to refocus and yeah, you had to kind of find find yourself, and you had to reinvent yourself and find out what you like doing outside of football. Yeah. 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 And luckily, man, I had some hobbies, man. I always done music, man. But, you know, another thing I was, I was getting into real estate, you know, yeah. so I got in this real estate, man. I really dove back in. Um, I got on the, the education side, man. I started just educating myself. I became a licensed realtor mm-hmm. so I could basically get paid to learn. You know, I, I right. work with investor clients right? and I dove back into it, man. But it's still no day, bro. I'm 31 years old, and still some days I wake up like, well, I'll still go get them boys a year and uh, go get them boys 10 games. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. I still, right, got, right. Hey, I still got, you know. I'm telling but you. That's just the nature of this, man. We young dogs, man. And 
You know, you know I, I always consider myself an athlete to the day I can't do it no more. That's why Man, I'm I always you. stay in shape. It'll, it'll never, it it'll never go away. It'll <laughs> never go. Well, yeah. See, I, see, I, I, I cut all the way down. I got down to two hundred seven. I, gotcha. I was super lean. Uh, and I, yeah. and I picked, and I picked up a little weight. Um, uh, during the pandemic, I think I'm probably like two thirty five right now. But yeah, like you say, okay, yeah, we, we always gonna be athletes. We always gonna be able to yeah. just be able to do anything. I, I went to play basketball a couple of days ago. Man, gay niggas like ten, gay niggas ten out of twelve. <laughs> easy, come here. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Let's run out of triple double, man. You know what I mean? It's just it's just easy. We athletes, man. But uh yeah, yeah. yeah man, yeah. So, so talk about how did you identify that you were passionate about real estate, that you were pat you were passionate about hosting because you started that podcast and yeah. that led you into being a sports analyst and the TV and the news host now. So yeah. how were you how were you able to identify those acumens that you were good at and then just yeah. continue to evolve and elevate and get to the point where you are now, kind of balancing both but doing great yeah. at both. Right. You know what? It, it started with a book that I read, man. It was called Success is Not an Accident. Wow. Um, okay. And this book, yeah, it, it literally lays out, like, how you can mold yourself into anything. It basically says you can become anything, but it starts with writing down your goals, man. Yeah. You write down these goals, and then you make a plan, and then, you know, you work from there, and you got to put it in, you know, so bong, bong, bong. And this is something that, as athletes, bro, especially – People like you and myself, bro, if you a top tier athlete, if you were a division one or even division, you've already done these steps, maybe unknowingly. Exactly. You know, you've already set this plan. Exactly. You already implemented these steps. You already had these sub goals and whatnot. You're like, mm -hmm. okay, I want to go to the league, which means I got to go to college. Right. College will be a sub goal. Your right. goal is the league, you know, or the goal is to, but this book literally teaches you how to formulate, how to self talk, how to write down, how to plan, how to execute. Yeah, yeah. And literally, I willed, I willed myself back into it, man. But to start with identifying who you are, man. Yeah, that's amazing. List all bro. your good traits, man. What do you know? Are you smart, man? I'm, I'm, I'm passionate. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm well spoken. I'm, I'm yeah. educated. I'm, I had to start going down these things. Like, okay, boom. All right, I'm not in the game no more, but I can do still hop on this podcast yeah. and show off my talent. Still, still show off my God-given talent. Yeah. God gave me this mouth to. Yeah. Because it's a lot of people where we from or even done what we've done that can't communicate exactly. what we can. Exactly. We got to be the <laughs> mouthpiece for them. I'm we got to be you. the advocates for them. You understand? Because uh, that's going to bridge the gap. Exactly. That's going to bridge the gap. And I think it may change the U.S. that we know as it is, but I think it starts with communication. Mm -hmm. It's keys to that. You know, mm -hmm. and like you said, um, for me, for me, it's it's been a stepping stone and a plan that I put in place. But I got a journal right now from 2000 and 19 beginning of 2019 i wrote yeah. some of these goals that i'm hitting right now yeah that i hit right now and some that i haven't hit you, yet. you had it you had it written down middle, you had it written down I had it written down right now what i'm doing exactly yeah. what i'm doing and i'm telling Why you people, I hit that? that stuff's so powerful the the power of journaling uh i started journaling oh, back yeah. in like 2017 like you say really just identifying who you are what you're passionate about and moving towards yeah. that uh vision board vision boards just stuff like that i think as as grown men and black men, you know, you know how we grew up. Like our pops wasn't doing vision boards, our pops wasn't journaling, nah. and, you know, stuff like that. So, so nah. I, I definitely think it's a different kind of vibe. But for us, it can evolve us into that next like superhuman, right? Because we got the yeah. athletics, we got all the tough shit. We, like we grew up in that. That, that yeah. that's easy. That's yeah. nothing. That's what we do. But but Perfect. this next level of thinking and really mm -hmm. manifesting things, like that's how we right. get to that next super superhuman. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And that's the evolution of generation. You know, yeah. our fathers, you know, and my father, I can speak. He was a great man. You know, he was a great coach, man. He was a father figure for a lot of kids in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But there's still a next level, you know, whether it's communication or even on the emotional side, like we talked about. Exactly. Seeking help, getting help. Man, I've, I've seen therapists. Me too. <laughs> I still see a therapist. You know what I'm saying? Just the top of we used to have that, yo. You see a third what's wrong with it? Yo, yeah, boy, special, yeah. yo. Not yeah, like, yeah, right. Nah, no, 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 special. I'm trying to elevate myself. I'm trying to correct. I'm trying to heal scars. Exactly. Maybe from my childhood, maybe exactly. from my adulthood. Exactly. But I'm not gonna wear these, I'm not gonna wear these dumbbells around for y'all. Exactly. <laughs> because because you're never gonna grow. You're gonna be 50, 60 and still be scarred from you know the stuff that you didn't heal from. Mad at somebody. Yeah, I'm telling or, you. Or, or 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 you know, having some pent up. That's the beauty Anger. of, you know, yeah. the next level. Like you said, the elevation, man, it allows me to keep elevating because I don't have to carry old baggage. You see still to me this day what I'm repping. 
Yeah, right, right. Asking, Yo, you mad at Iowa? Did you like that? No, bro. Nah, I, I ain't did what I had to do. Exactly. exactly. You know I, I did what I had to do, bro. It's yeah. always all love. Man. As long as y'all doing the right thing. And that's just my mindset always, bro. Man, that's... Man, that that's so that's so powerful, man. I, I I talk I talk I I talk that language when it comes to journaling and writing things down and and thumb it thumb it through as many books as you can. Is all that, and that's why I had to get my path. Success is not an accident. That's gonna be my next book, bro. Yeah, for sure. For real, it's but, powerful, um, bro, and very powerful. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely, man. So, last question, bro. Like I said, I call this the yeah. After Effect Podcast. Like I said earlier, bro, I, I've always felt like. Athletes, we've been doing this for 20 plus years. We all had an after effect, an aftershock of experiences from the wins and the losses and the injuries and yeah. the successes and the losses and stuff like that. What would you say is Desmond Moses' after effect? What are some lessons that you would learn that you would, like you said, give to your kids, that you would give to the next generation, you know, as we try to push the culture forward? Yeah. You know what, man? That's a great question. And, you know, just really thinking back, uh, you know, through all my thoughts and thoughts and all my time um i would have to say that i would have to just say that team man you know team is the key to the whole thing and i say that in the sense of the people around you know it's the journey yeah. it's hard bro it's very hard, hard man we're, <laughs> la we're laughing about these stories now yeah. you know but there were very many days when we went in and it, it was well, nothing shit, well, funny. Shit wasn't funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing funny. No funny business was going on. Like I'm telling you, bro. You know, but it, it's it's these times when when you look to your right, you look to your left, man. You see your faces and and, and the, the Deontay Morals and exactly. you know the, the Prater brothers and you know when <laughs> right, you see right. the, they 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 feeling the same pain. I'm telling um, you, man. That's the things you you can look back on and, and truly the bond that keeps you together, man. Exactly. Because once it's all said and done, it's just memories, man, that we can sit here and chop it up. Chop it up, yeah. Make fun of it and relive Even it and if, stuff like that. Yeah, whether you play, you know, in the league, whether you play now, all of these memories, man, it's it's literally life changing, man, and it's changed who we are. And I think it's gonna continue to elevate us, man. We're still only 31 years old. Exactly. We I still have no a, a lot of mind. A lot of life life to live, man. <laughs> I have no doubt in my mind we're gonna do business uh, in this lifetime, probably in the next ten years or so. Get some money together too. In the next you know, five, like, in the next five, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm on that wavelength. I'm, I'm, I'm building, bro. <laughs> yeah, I have no doubt. You know, and it might be on some media tip. It might be on. I don't know, but I know that God, you know, placed us and put these people I'm telling in you. our lives for a reason, man. And and, and the the next piece I'll say is that truly, I think it carved us out as as men, because, yeah. you know, when you're on a team, there's white, there's black, there's Hispanic, mm -hmm. there's all type of uh, people from different backgrounds and ethnicities. Exactly. Rarely do you ever judge a man that way. You're judging by his game, you're judging by his character. Exactly. And if we could do that as Americans and as citizens. But the world would be a great <laughs> place, bro. It would be a great place. <laughs> Say I no more. <laughs> I promise you, fact. man. <laughs> but, but yeah, bro, that's actually all I had, man. I appreciate you carving out the yeah. time. And so I've been trying to, I've been trying to pride myself on, um, like, like we said, 2020 been a weird year. A lot of different people been dying and uh, family members have been yeah. passing because of COVID and stuff like that. We've all had to pivot. Yeah. So I've been proud of myself on giving guys flowers while they're still here. And yeah. I just want to let you know, face up, you know what I'm saying? That I'm super proud yeah. of you. All the accolades, all the accomplishments. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's been super dope that we've been able to cultivate our relationship, yeah. even though it's been 13 years, we, 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 we were able to stay in touch. Um, so, and no. I just want to, I want to give you that love and give you a flower while, while, while we both still here. Man, same to you, bro, man. Honestly, I love you, big dog, man. I've seen your evolution, man, as a man. You know, you was a hard-nosed kid from, from Ohio when I <laughs> man, met you. Super you know? hard-nosed, bro. I, Didn't you know, hardly talk to you, nobody, nothing, yeah. bro. <laughs> he, he, wasn't, he wasn't finna uh, talk for no reason. He wasn't finna just say, you I'm know. That's why you, whatever bro. you spoke, bro, I listened. And I always had respect for you, man, from that day to this day, man. Yeah, I appreciate so I you. I seen you the same, bro. All yes, love, Yes, sir. Man. All love, man. So, well, happy Saturday. Yeah. Continue to be safe. I love to you and your family, yes, man. And uh, thanks, man. About to go watch some Big Ten football. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get it. All Take right, it man. We'll be in touch, bro. All right, peace. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, man. I got to take a couple. I got to take a couple breaths because uh, that was I felt a really powerful episode. Just you know, catching all that game from Desmond. 
just look at his journey, right? Just all the different emotions from Jersey to Iowa City to Tulane to Green Bay to Kansas City, still in Kansas City, killing it in the real estate game, killing it in the media game. So just so happy he was able to carve out some time to have him on. And just to continue to tell these amazing stories that I think a lot of fans and these people in general really don't really know about or don't really know the details of it, right? So again, thank you so much for tuning in to episode 26. Until next time. Oh, go Hawks. <laughs> Peace.